Hey, you, I need you to hit the subscribe button below. What I'm doing right now is I'm showing you love. How do you love God? We're going to show you what love is. Bring love ain't no kisses and hugs. Right. A uh, dozen roses and all of that, teddy bears. That right. ain't love. Right. That's not love. Right. Right? We're going to show you what real love is. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. If you really love God, God don't care about what you're saying out your mouth. Right. God cares about your actions. Right. A lot of people is going to be condemned and burned in a lake of fire and judged severe penalties. A severe judgment for what? For their intentions. Right. It it's your actions that count. Right. This is love right here. That you keep his commandments. That you do what? That you do his commandments. Right. You put it in action. Right? And his commandments are not grievous. His what? And his commandments are not grievous. When it's going into grievous, that means it ain't a hard thing to do. That's right, that's right. That ain't hard at all to actually love and serve God. Right. right? So if you truly love God, if you love God like how you say you do, if you're a follower of Christ, right. you're going to do everything in your power to put them cigarettes down. That's you're going to do everything in your power to do what? To wear the righteous apparel. Right. Why? Because... When you rock the unrighteous apparel, when you smoking the cigarettes, when you wilding out, when you breaking God's commandments, right. the penalty is, is on you, but it's a generational curses that we're receiving. Right. When the younger women see you in sin, they say to themselves, it's okay for me to be in sin. Right. Let's go to Titus 2. Because as older women, these are things that we got to teach the younger women. I online the other day and I saw a young woman that's a rapper right no. she got on Instagram and she said she said I only F with drug dealers and I only deal with killers Break it up. she said if you ain't if you ain't body 10 10 people I'm not I'm not dating you I'm not dealing with you that's the example that our younger women have she only dates murderers she only dates drug dealers rappers and killers I don't even date niggas bro that's number one but if you was acting like you living like that, like you acting like you living like that, you and you, you know, if somebody caught a body, you got it's a certain amount that you gotta have in order to be my boyfriend. I ain't just dating niggas. You see what I'm saying? So Wendy Williams and all the rest of the blogs had it up. That's not what I meant. I meant if I with you and you living like that. And you got on your belt, you better have a certain amount to me. Because if you don't got a certain amount of me, I can't take you serious because I'm really out here niggas with bodies. That's it. And if it gets time, you know, like, my niggas go to war with me. So if you ain't caught, uh, caught enough bodies and you ain't mentally there, you cannot me. I want a nigga that when it come down to it, you better be ready to, to clip, clap, pow. That's it. Not rocket science. And you know how to with me. I'm cool. Cause I don't even f with niggas. I don't even f y'all. That's just like that's just setting the bar. Like now I need a nigga with ten bodies. Now since niggas is dragging it. You gotta have ten bodies. A lot of y'all niggas got ten bodies. So guess what that means? Guess who ain't Asian? Y'all. The young women as preteens, right. teenagers, right. that's the example that they have. Why? Right. Because our older women don't got righteous examples set forth for, set forth for them. Right. So you got to be the light to the younger women that's and right. show them the way. Show them that there is this there's, there's, uh, there's benefits to keeping the commandments. That's right. Right. Let's see what the older women got to do. We're going to go to Titus 2 and we're going to see how what is the example that we should set forth for the younger women. Because that's wild when you think about it. Right. This is a rapper that has, has many, many followers. Right. Thousands of people follow her. Right. right? That's what she said right. on the internet. And she wasn't talking about a uh, uh, body. She, the body she was talking about is death. What she say is you you gotta kill at least 10 people to be with her. Right. So what is the younger women gonna do? They're gonna have that same mentality. And they're not talking about you gotta kill 10 Chinese folks, right. 10 white people. And we're not saying to kill nobody. That's but right. what we're saying is what she's saying right. is you gotta kill 10 black men right. to be with her. Right. 
That's crazy. Right. That's madness. Right. That's a wicked. That is what we, what we was reading in Ephesians six. Right. That's the principalities, the darkness that we're fighting against. That's right. Let's see the righteous example that we got to set forth for the younger women. Titus chapter two and verse three. Bring it out. The age woman. That's you. If you got you got kids, yeah. kids, kid, you're an age woman right there off the top. If you got kids and you're teaching younger younger women, younger men, and you're raising them up, you're an aged woman, right? So it says that the aged women do what? Likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, right, really? not false accusers, right? not giving too much wine. So our women should not be out there getting getting drunk, right. wild drunk in the streets like we see a lot of nights when we come out here right. and we preach the word. Bring it out. A lot of our women are like, you can drink, but once you get drunk and right. intoxicated, right. you're giving to too much wine. Right. These are things that we ought not to do, right, Reed? Teachers of good things. What, so an aged women got to be teachers of good things. Right. What's good, though? What is a good thing that we teach the, the younger women? What would you say? How is the younger women going to have respect? But you said some of the things that we should teach the younger women is to have respect for themselves, right? How are we going to teach the younger women to have respect for themselves if we're destroying our, if we don't respect ourselves? You, you, we know you don't respect yourself enough right. to quit smoking the cigarettes. Right. And I'm not saying that to be disrespectful. Right. I'm not saying that to be mean. Right. I'm not saying that in any kind of malicious way. But you, we know that you don't respect yourself because you're killing yourself slowly. So you said you don't agree? I told you I smoked 30 cigarettes a day. All right. Now I smoke 10. I'm so, so you smoke 30 cigarettes a day and now you smoke 10. All praises to the most high God that you're going lower and lower till you quit. But yet and still, it's still killing yourself. It's still self-harm. That's not a form of respect. I'm just being real with you. That's all, and, I, and I know it sounds kind of rough. I know that sounds tough, to, uh, tough saying, but you don't respect yourself. You don't. And you got, that's why you gotta quit smoke all together. And that's a commendable thing. That's a very good thing that you're doing to smoke less. But what we're saying is to not sin no more, my sister. That's what we're saying. So we gotta teach the young women to respect themselves, to love themselves, right? To not smoke cigarettes, right? What, what else would you say are some good things that we gotta teach the younger women? Education. So we gotta we gotta teach them to be knowledgeable, right? Okay. What is knowledge? We're gonna get it. We're gonna go to Malachi two and seven, and we're gonna see what is the education that the older women gotta teach the younger women. The aged women gotta teach the unaged women. Let's see the knowledge, the education that needs to be laid out on the table. Malachi chapter two and verse seven. For the priest's lips shall keep knowledge, and they shall seek the law at his mouth. We gotta teach the laws of the Most High God. That's right. We gotta teach the younger women that they're not. They're they're not thoughts, right. they're not jump offs, right. they, they should not be living promiscuous lives, right. but that they are Israelites, that's right. God's favorite, God's chosen princesses. So that's the education that we got to teach. What? Right. The laws of God, modesty and shamefacedness, right? What would you say, my sister, are some of the things that we got to teach the younger women? What would you say? Teach them about God? All praises, that's right. So we're going to see, it says that we got to teach the younger women good things, right? Read. Verse 4, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. So first, like how we, how we went over earlier, right. the respect, right? The self-respect. First, we got to learn how to respect ourselves. Right. First, we got to learn how to love ourselves. Right. Then we can be able to love our children. That's right. Then we will be able to love our husbands. Right. Because a lot of times what you see in the black homes right. with those uh, single parents, usually what we see right. in our homes growing up Bring is up. no dad. Right. 
And a lot of times we gotta we gotta take ownership of of the wrong that happened and say we chase the man away. That's right. The black women a lot of times chase the men out the house. Teach. Yes, there are a lot of men that don't want to live up and don't want to raise their children and don't right. want to own up to that responsibility. Right. But on the same token, a lot of times what do we try to do? We try to control men. Bring right. it up. A lot of times we try to control the men and all we do is in his ear all day and what? He leaves. Right. So a lot of times we got to learn how to love ourselves and then we can love the children. Right. Then we can actually know through the scriptures how to how to um, be a helpmate right. to a man. Right. Not to, not It's not fitty fitty. You won't see that nowhere in the Bible. Right. God set up an order. What do you think the order is? What would you say the order is in a, in a black home, in an Israelite home? What, how does the order go? Would you say that it's 50-50 or would you say it's 30-20? What would you say? How does it go down? Uh, two, is two is one. What does that mean? So who runs the house then? So what do, what do they do? Is it is it 50-50? Women, women, women don't or they do? They do. They I'm do? And is that good or is that is that a bad thing? For the kids is bad, okay, we can agree. But we're talking about a marriage, right? Is should a marriage be 50-50? You say yes. What would you say? Uh, it's easy, yes or no? Yeah. Yeah? And what would you say, my sister? Should a marriage be 50-50? 50 Let's see according to the Bible. Bring it out. Because these are the things that we got to wash our minds from. That's right. If we don't come and understand what God is actually saying to us, what are we going to do? We're going to teach the younger women. Who would you say, my brother? About marriage. About a marriage. It should be. It should be uh, anybody that got their role and know how to do, do work their place in it, God do what you got to do. So, so if I say a man should be the head of a household, does, is, does that equate to 50-50? Because somebody got to rule the house. Should it, so should somebody be ruling the house or should it be an equal like a democracy? Let's show you right here. Hold that, hold that. We're gonna show you because there's no 50-50 in the home. When the man is keeping God's laws, statutes and commandments, God has called our men to be leaders. That's right. What we have been raised in America is to be subservient to women. And that's why things are in disarray. Go to Genesis 3 and verse 16. We're gonna see what it does it say. Genesis 3, 16, from the very beginning. That's what Genesis is, beginnings. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception and sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. It says that your husband should rule over you. That's why women get their menstruals every single month. Bring it they out. bleed. That's why the children is a great painful thing right. and dangerous thing when the women get brought forth in the world. Bring it out, because huh? a lot of our women do not want to have the men rule over them. Wake them up. A lot of our women say it should be 50-50 and a democracy. We should take a vote. Right. But let's see what the righteous order should be. And we're not saying that the man should be a lion in the household and be evil toward his wife. Right. What we're saying is that the role of a man is to be what? The leader, the head of a household. That's and right. what in righteousness according to God's laws. Right. Let's, let's go to Corinthians. Let's see. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So every man has someone over them. It's not a free for all, right? It's not. It's, it's not like uh, uh, everybody could do whatever they want. Right. Even Christ, our Black Messiah, has a head, and that's God. That's the Most High God. Right. Christ has a head. Uh, uh, I'm jumping the gun, but man, every man walking the earth has a head over him, and that's God. So every man has someone they have to answer to at the end of the day. And that's that's Jesus Christ, our black Messiah. Right. Why do we do it again? But I will have you know that the head of every
every man is Christ. Right, Reed. And the head of every woman is the man. So when we read in Genesis 3.16 that the man is going to rule over the woman and her desire is to be ruled over. Her desire is to have a man leading her in righteousness. It says that the head of every man is Christ. Right. The head of every woman is the man. That's because right. a lot of people say, well, Jesus Christ is my husband. No, he ain't. Jesus Christ is not your husband. He's not dealing with our women like that. He's dealing right. with the man. Right. God set forth an order, a biblical order. Right. So it's not 50-50. It's not a democracy. Right? This is how God set things forth. Right, Reed? Is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So Christ has a head. That's God. Right? The man has a head. That's Christ. The women have a head. That's the man. And the women rule over the children. That's when you have a righteous household keeping God's laws and everything is in order. But when you step outside of that, what do you get? Isaiah 3 and 12. Read out. This is what we have been handed down to us in America. A lot of us, myself included, we have been raised in single-parent households. And this is what the Bible says about single-parent households. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Look it out. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Our children are oppressing us. Because today in 2020, a lot of our women, we do what? We do everything wicked and idolatrous to what? To please the children. That's why we got Halloween. That's why we got Thanksgiving. That's why we got Christmas. All of those are not biblical holidays. Right. All of those holidays that I just said are pagan holidays. Yes. And the number one reason black folk keep those holidays is what? They say, yeah, I know Thanksgiving. It was a genocide going on there. Right. Mad Native Americans died. Right. Yeah, yeah, I know Halloween is the day of the devil, and, but we do it anyways. Bring it up. Yeah, I know Christmas is pagan because Christ was never born on December 25th. Wake him up. But we do it. Why? We do it. Why? Because of the children. That's right. It said that children right. are our oppressors. Right. We have our our children oppressing us, right, Reed? As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. This is why you have a lot of single, like you said, my sister, the children get affected. Bring it out. So when are we going to rearrange things back into his rightful order? When are we going to step out of being in sin and idolatry and start keeping God's laws? That's when are you going to do it, my sister? When? When? Tomorrow? Next week? Next month? How about today? You ain't got to make no promises to me. No, no, I'm just a man. Tomorrow is not exactly. Tomorrow is not promised. When are you, my brother? Psalms 94, 16. Sir. When, you, when, you, when are you going to keep God's commandments? Huh? Every day? We just touched on some things that a lot of our people do, which is sin. There are many things that we are doing that's completely out of order. Today is the day that we're going to stand up. Today. The sister said tomorrow's not promised. Right. I can leave from here right now, God forbid, lose my life. You can leave from here, to, God forbid, calamity, could, uh, God could touch any one of us. Right. Because it's God that sends the death, Bring right? So today has to be the day we say we, I'm going to stand up and serve God, right? Read. Psalm chapter, chapter 94 and verse 16. Bring it out. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who's going to rise up and say, you know what? I'm going to stand against evil. I'm not going to celebrate Christmas. I'm not, because Christmas is pagan. Bring it out. We all say we do it for Jesus Christ. Right. But like I said earlier, we all know Jesus wasn't born in the winter. Right. So why do you celebrate Christmas, bro? Why do you celebrate Christmas, sister? Y'all don't, so y'all going to get gifts on December 25th, a treat? All praises to the Most High God. When, are, when We ain't even talking, we ain't dealing with you. When are we going to stop this craziness? When are we going to put on our righteous garments? When are we going to put the dresses on? Because that's a commandment from God. That's right. There's a judgment that comes with that, right? It says, who is what? Psalm 94, verse 16. Bring it up. Who will rise up for me against the evil doers? Or who would stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Because we could easily curse that white lady out right there, that Edomite, right? But that's not what we out here to do. Who's going to rise up and stand against the evildoers? How do we How do we fight against these principalities? How do we fight against the evil wickedness that's in America? Bring it up. First, we got to have the mental state that we're going to say, you know what? That's me. I'm an Israelite. Right. I'm going to stand up against the workers of iniquity. Right. I'm going to stand up against sin, right? Because 
because look, let's go back to Ephesians. Hold on. Go back to Ephesians 6. Bring it out. Because we can easily cuss people out and tell them, ah, oh, whatever, whatever. But the way you fight against the evil right. is by bringing your hand to keep the commandments. Right. How you fight against the evilness, the wickedness, is by wearing the dress. Right. By how you fight against the evilness, the wickedness, is by not eating a pork no more. By keeping God's commandments. Right, Reed? Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Because how do we put on the armor of God? By keeping the commandments. How do we put on? Just by identifying who you are in the Bible alone. Right. You can put on the armor of God. By saying my nationality is no, no longer black. Right. What the hell is black? Your shirt is black. Right. That's all it is, is a color. Wake them up. There has to be more to our nationality than a description right. of our skin tone. Right. Because you got some black people that's light skin. Right. Some people's light skinned in it. Some people is extremely dark. Bring it up. Some of us that are Israelites are we do have pale skin, right? But it's not when we're going into your nationality, it's not just about your skin tone alone. Right. Your nationality is who you are, the seed of your father, that's right? Good. The so-called blacks, so-called Hispanics. So those that are on this sign, right? Those that are scattered throughout the earth that through colonize, right. scattered how? By way of, of slavery. These are the Israelites. These are God's chosen people. Right. That's how we know. That's how we fight. That's how we fight. Yeah, let's go to Deuteronomy. So that this is how we're going to rise up. This is how we're going to fight against the darkness. This is how we're going to fight against the iniquity that's in the earth. It's by identifying who we are in the Bible that's as right. Israelites. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth